Hey y'all, I'm Richard Metal Fan here. I'm bringing you guys an old school album review, and today we're going to be looking into this album's 20th anniversary. It's from one of my favorite black metal albums, or symphonic black metal albums, and as you can see below the title, today we're going to be talking about Puritanical Euphoric Misanthropia by Demi Borgir, the band's fifth album released on March 20th, 2001, through Nuclear Blast Records. Now, this was the band's fifth album, and this follows up their uh, fourth album, which came out in 1999, called Spiritual Black Dimensions. And I think with Spiritual Black Dimensions, I think that Demi Borgir had really sort of solidified their sound, or um, pretty much the song that they're known for today, with the, the uh, sort of like the symphonics, and they started using a little bit of clean vocals. And with this album, I feel like they really used really orchestration, instead of like using like keyboard st stuff which I think is really awesome. Um, and this album, um, it's just like a lot of people consider this one of Demi Borgir's best albums. I do have to agree, it's uh, really great. Uh, let's just talk about like production. Produ pr the production is fucking amazing. Like the everything is just lined up where it need needs to be. It's amazing. I keep saying amazing a lot, I'm sorry. But uh, let's just talk about like just the vocals, like the, the lead vocals from a Shagrath. He does like, like that, <clears throat> just really just that black metal sounding stuff is just fucking awesome. Um, the guitar work is tight, this tight from a uh, Galder and Silenos. Like just the the riffs they come up with is great. And just the leads that Galder just does is is mind blowing. And the bass is pretty audible. You could definitely hear it. This is the first album to feature, in my opinion, the best was the best addition to Demi Borgir, ICS Vortex, and do him doing clean vocals. He did a little bit of clean vocals on the the Spiritual Black Dimensions, but he was just as a guest. But this is actually his first album as an official member of the band, which is, and he's like uh, awesome. Like he has like a lot of talent. Like, it's a sh like Demi pretty much made a big mistake by, by letting him go, which is, I just I missed that dude. Um, then the keyboards from uh, Mustis. In my opinion, I think Mustis is a very underrated keyboard player. He, like he just adds like a lot of like depth to the music and just the drumming from uh, Nick Barker. He also played in Cradle of Filth. Filth, and this is actually the, his first album with the band. And Nick Barker is like one of my favorite drummers of all time, and he's currently in Brugeria. Uh, Nick just does a really great job job and he just he's just all over the place so yeah without further ado let's dive into this album track by track now starting things off is the song fear and wonder which is like a less than three minute ar symphonic arrangement just consisting of like a full orchestra and it almost kind of like sounds like something from like lord of the rings and and shit but then the next song where it just kicks in right in the face with a blessing upon the throne of tyranny which is in my opinion is one of the best songs on this album. Let's start with the insane guitar part and then it's just accompanied by some sick like double bass and then Shagrath's vocals just sound really great as usual and then the verse breaks into some great top-notch music where just like one guitar plays a simple pattern and then the whole band just comes in and Shagrath lets out a, just a demonic ugh, which just echoes throughout and then the chorus kind of slows down but then picks up right again with the verse and it eventually breaks down to a little bit more bit slower but that just goes pretty much how it was at the beginning of the song um next up is kings of the carnival creation and which starts off with some of the coolest keyboard parts i've ever heard accompanied by some a little bit of like sounds from swirling winds and then the whole band comes in with sort of like some start stop drums and then guitars and then shagrath's voice just comes right in and it's kind of similar to Blessing Upon the Throne of Tyranny, where it kind of slows down near the middle, but then it has some great headbanging moments, such as just like a great guitar solo from Galder. And this is actually the first track where we actually hear ICS Vortex doing his clean vocals, and it just shines, especially in the chorus, which makes it that awesome. Um, next song on the album is called Hybrid Stigma, The Apostasy. And this one kind of starts off with like a short symphonic arrangement greeting by, by everyone, including Shagra at the start. The song and then the opening thing verse has some kind of like cool vocal stuff and it really just makes it sound very evil sounding and the chorus of the song starts with a cool string arrangement and then this song sounds really kind of happy which is weird for black metal and then and vortex shines through again and then shagrath rips up another vocal part and it's another awesome song um architecture of a genocidal nature or this is another one of my favorite songs from the album when it starts you probably wouldn't like it too much as it sort of like lacks a little 
bit from the first couple songs, but then you just wait till it has the coolest breakdown ever and you'll fucking be amazed. And it sounds like something thing from like a horror show and stuff. And it just follows like some cool vocal effects. And this whole song just really just showcases the, the awesome stuff that Demi Borgir uses. And this song is a bit slower than the rest of the songs, songs which is weird. And then we move on to Puritana, no, which is probably the best song on the album. It starts with kind of like a weird kind of like cyborg-y voice and then sort of like double bass drums kick in and it just talks about like the destroying the human race, which makes it cool. And then the guitars, hers just kick right in and it just, there's like a little bit pause for the vocals and then there's another like, like robot voice and then Mustis lays down some great synths. And then right before the chorus, he actually plays a little melody, which kind of like sound, being like something thing from a horror mo movie. Um, Indoctrination. And this song kind of like starts off with a very sick yell from Shagrath and it just goes right into the verse and the bass strums are insane on this one. And just Nick Barker just does a great job on the drumming. It's just very machine gun light. Like in the chorus in this song is really great, followed by like another deepish voice and it has like some kick-ass symphonic breakdown and some more crazy vocal effects. It's kind of like repeated a little bit more, but it's another great song. Next up is the Maelstrom Mephisto. And this one kind of starts off with a pretty sick dr short drum fill and then everyone comes in, is in except for Shagrath. And it's also very fast. It has another great, great intro and the chorus is really catchy, especially afterwards and then and Vortex just takes over like the chorus for this one as well, but this is not the last we'll hear from him. No, no. Um, Absolute Soul Right. This one is just a pounding song. It just starts off pounding, literally. It just like double bass drums are blasting and the guitars are really chugging and the bass right here is very booming and it slows down to, for some picked riffs and then it just picks back up again later. And it has some really great piano parts near the end though. Though, but it's not one of my favorite songs, but it makes up for like the last two songs on here. We move on to Symposium. Um, now, Symposium is, starts off very epic with a symphonic arrangement doing like the leads and the guitars and doing the rhythm. The chorus is also catchy with some fast pick riffing and sort of like the background has some little bit of harmonizing. And the bridge is the best part of the song, which has some great chugging guitar riff accompanied by some synth. And so then Vortex sings on this one, and it's the last time we'll hear from him. Um, and then in fact, this is actually the last we'll hear from everyone. And then the last song on here is Perfection of or Vanity. Now this song is an instrumental and it's an epic one, one with the symphony doing the lead. And this one does get a little bit repetitive as it repeats the same parts over for like three minutes. And this is another one I skip, but it doesn't like detract from the album many. Me. So overall, Puritanical Euphoric Misanthropia by Demi Borgir is another classic album. Um, if you're a fan of like black metal or symphonic al metal or symphonic black metal, I should say, you need to listen to this fucking album. It's a beast all the way through and one of the best albums that Demi Borgir has done. So I would give this album a score. I'm going to give this a solid 9 out of 10. So yep, that's my review of the album, guys. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about the album and I'll see you all in the next video. And as always, keep it metal. Talk.